Welcome back from Ruth Respite on Lunch Recess. When we suspended, we had just completed statements communication by ministers. We'll continue with the agenda to the point where we will suspend my understanding. Communications by the clerk. Speaker, I beg leave to report delivery of messages 52 and 53 to the Honorable the Senate. Thank you. Messages from the Governor General, messages from the Senate. I'm advised we have received messages, to, uh, three messages from the Senate that they, the Senate consented to the to the following bills. Resolves that the House approves the conveyance of 13.74 acres of the land in North Palmetto Point. And secondly, a bill for an act to amend the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act. I'm advised that one of the bills, the, the, the Senate has returned for amendment to be made and we will process that as we go through the agenda. Motion for leave of absence, leave to resign, seat in New Ritz. Presentation of petition, presentation of reports of committees, adoption of reports of committees. First reading of bills. Second reading and committal of bills. Committee of the whole house. Resolutions, sorry consideration of Senate amendments. Chair recognize the Honorable Member for South Central Elutra. Consideration of Senate amendments. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to table the following. An amendment to the Anti-Terrorism Amendment Bill 2015 agreed to by the Senate on the Thursday, the 29th October 2015. Mr. Speaker, the reasons for the amendment are set out in the um, amendment document. They are that it seeks to clarify the section to enable the Attorney General to make applications to the Supreme Court for an entity to be designated as a listed entity when either of the conditions as listed in Section 4.1 exists. The movement also seeks to amend the section further to enable the court to grant an order designating an entity as a listed entity. We've already debated the bill and <coughs> um, the objects are fairly clear. While they may seem on a first blush to be more expansive than anything else, they really amount to a substitution of the word and with the word or in subsections 1A, 3B1, and 4.1 as set out in the amendments to be made. Um, it should not be a controversial matter. It's really a clarification, um, a grammatical um, editorializing of the bill. Um, something that normally <coughs> the member for Montague does for us quite well. <laughs> and um, in this instance, um, he and I would readily admit that this slipped to our attention. <laughs> I don't mean that as a, uh, but you know, um, but be that as it may, Mr. Speaker, that's the extent of it. Um, it is something that's um, needed for CFATF um, elevation into the fourth round, and it's uh, of some importance in that regard. And with that, I commend it to this House, and I so move. Thank you, Honorable Member. S seconded. Moved and seconded that the bill be amended as read. As many as are in favor will remain seated. Those opposed will stand. The bill is hereby amended as read. 
resolutions, right? member statements. Chair, recognize the honorable member for Michael. Um, Mr. Speaker, I just rise to say thanks to the wonderful people of the Bahamas generally, both business houses and individuals, and those from outside the Bahamas who have contributed so much in terms of material and labor and time uh, on behalf of the people of the Macau constituency as a result of the recent storm. I do not want this opportunity to go by without saying a big thank you to all those who gave anything at all. Um, I want to thank NEMA. I want to thank uh, the Ministry of Works. I want to thank uh, the Ministry of Transport Aviation. I want to thank those who are now preparing to build or rebuild. I may not have a, a chance to, to say that. And so, Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the people of Acklands, Crooked Island, uh, Maguana, not, not, um, not Inagua, because Inagua was not... Um, impacted by the, by the storm, and so they would not have suffered that much damage. Finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the government because I believe if the government hadn't done what they did within the time frame which they did it, the suffering would be even greater. And so, Mr. Speaker, there are several uh, ministries and ministers who are involved. Again, the Minister of Transport, Minister of Social Services, uh, Minister of Tourism. Uh, these are ministries that sprung into action, environment, education, uh, health, uh, National Security Defense Force. Mr. Speaker, all of the ministries that had the obligation to do anything they did it, and they did it in style. They're still doing it, Mr. Speaker, all over uh, the constituency. The government is still in action. And uh, I think the people of my constituency, they're very happy for the response and the assistance which the government has given. And so thanks to everyone. If I forgot to call any name, it's really from my head and not my heart. Because sometimes when you start, you sometimes leave out someone that you should uh, uh, remember. And finally, Mr. Speaker, the people. The people of the constituency, uh, Mr. Speaker, they are resilient. They are, at this moment, seeking to rebuild. There are some people that, Mr. Speaker, I cannot otherwise but name in terms of offices. The administrator, uh, the police, the defense force, I'm talking about people on that island now, Mr. Speaker. Um, the nurses, the doctors, um, it's Mr. Speaker, just everybody. Those who had two transportation left. Mr. Speaker, you would not believe there were only two vehicles that were able to negotiate the depth of the water after the storm. As the police jeep and a big truck that was there. And so the rest of the vehicles were either lost because of water or the water was so high they were not able to negotiate passage. And so, Mr. Speaker, on all those islands, if I left out anybody, I pray that they will forgive me. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there members, were two administrators members, who traveled. Members, bring your voices down. Members. Two administrators who traveled from their districts where they were to help the administrators uh, substantive in post, and that was Administrator Leary out of, out of the Berry Islands. He went to Acklands to assist uh, Administrator <coughs> Roberts there, and uh, Administrator Kemp out of Governor's Harbor. He went to assist uh, Administrator uh, Neely in, in Crooked Island. And so, Mr. Speaker, again, everybody is working together. The, 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 Methodist Habitat out of Eleuthera. I met them on the roof of the uh, airport building, and they were working almost waiting for material in the sense that they were breaking down while they waited. 
Uh, that was how eager they were to help. While they waited for the ship to come, they were breaking down the, uh, uh, the, the broken pieces so that once the material came uh, earlier this week, they were ready to uh, jump into action. And so, Mr. Speaker, that's uh, what I am able to say now. Thanks again. The people still need help, those who can assist in any way. Um, I believe this is going to be a long road, particularly for Long Key and uh, Crooked Island. Acklands is coming back well, the, as the Prime Minister said this morning, but the people of Crooked Island is still without electricity and might be so for a little while. And without electricity, the, the pace of progress is even slower. But um, whatever anybody who can hear me can do, if only a phone call, because most of the phones are on now, just to encourage them. I, I, I'm sure that will be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member Statements. Chair, recognize Honorable Member for Long Island. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, I'm not here to give a dissertation on any report, but I do stand on behalf of the good people of Long Island just to say that there are some concerns, and I would wish to place them on the record of this House this afternoon. First and foremost, after the hurricane, we realized that upwards of 70% of our production, our economic production, has been totally devastated. That is primarily fishing and farming. We have lost the majority of our fishing boats. I must say thank you very much to the individual who has provided a fishing boat, which I understand about 13 to 15 fishermen will co-op on and try and go out and have a fishing season. But the bigger picture here, Mr. Speaker, is while these people are attempting to rebuild their lives, they do not fall into the category that NEMA deems as those individuals who will be remedied by the government. Those are the indigent, the elderly, the infirmed, and the single parents. We in Long Island have in excess of 400 homes which have been affected, and I think the majority of our businesses and our production I stand here to plead on behalf of the people of Long Island. They've asked me to come here. I had a meeting with them on Monday evening, and there are concerns. I understand that the um, grouper season, which closes normally in December, they're asking that we look at it. I understand the spawning may have been disrupted because of the, the weather, <coughs> and they really are broke. So they're asking that the government looks very carefully at that season that they may at least be able to make some money between now and the beginning of the new year. Secondly, I wish to advise that businesses have lost everything as of homes and just this week businesses received emails asking for VAT returns. I must say that these people, everything has been washed away. School books, workbooks, machinery, computers. These people have no records. They're trying, to, pardon me? I mean, you can make light of it all you wish. These are very serious issues that they have said to me. And so what they're saying is that while they received these emails regarding that, I would like for the ministry to look at that very carefully because they've lost all of their records. Secondly, I would also like to say, Mr. Speaker, that with regards to children getting back to school. We have some concerns. Most of them are back in school, but they would have all lost their uniforms. And there are some instances where children are being asked to not report to school if they don't have full attire. I find it very difficult considering the fact that these people have lost everything. And so I will ask that the government please try to if through the Ministry of Education, ease the restrictions with regards to uniforms. There are many other things that I can speak to, but this final one I would like to raise here in the presence of this House for the Minister of National Security in particular. It was raised at our meeting in the presence of one of his senior police officers at that meeting on Monday evening. I heard the member from MICAL allude to the amount of vehicles that could actually move from one place to another. The water in some instances in Long Island was as high as 8 to 10 feet. And there was an order that came down the day after uh, the hurricane to make sure that no souls were lost, no bodies were missing, and the police officers had to act. 
and they had to get to parts of Long Island that were unreachable. Even though boats were being used, a young man and his wife just bought a new truck, a Toyota truck, left it on the side of the road with the keys in it as they went to check on their family members. The truck was commandeered by the police department and driven through the salt water to South Long Island. And what has happened now, the truck, just letting you know, I don't know how we're going to remedy it, but um, what has happened now, the truck is no longer working. It's the only truck they have. They're a fishing per, uh, family, and now the truck is gone. So I just needed to place those sort of stories on the record so you'd know when I do bring the report that we can at least have some sort of thought given to it so that these people can be made whole again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member statements. Chair recognize Honorable Member for North Eleuthera. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just very briefly, I wanted to inform the constituents of North Eleuthera of the, the new number for the North Eleuthera constituency office. And that number for the office itself is 3352164. So the number once again for the North Eleuthera constituency office is 3352164. That's the new number for that office. Also, Mr. Speaker, on Sunday I had the opportunity to attend a ordination service for the new pastor in North Eleuthera, Pastor David Ambrister of IPAD Ministries. He is the former chief counselor in the area as well and, former, and, and also an employee of the Ministry of Education and former deputy chief counselor for North Eleuthera, so former deputy and chief counselor. And I wanted to wish him all the best in his spiritual journey. And despite what challenges he might have, I also wanted to remind him that Ezekiel 48 says, the Lord will always be with thee. So I encourage him to stay focused in his new ministry and on his and to continue his good work in North Lutheran and help us build those communities also now spiritually. So I wish him all the best, Mr. Speaker. Also, Mr. Speaker, since we met here last, sadly, there have been a few deaths in North Eleuthera. And one of them is, one of the persons that we've lost is Ms. Bernice Johnson Smith, who is the mother of the former Speaker, the, the Honorable Speaker of this House, and the former member for North Eleuthera, Mr. Alvin Smith, his mother. So I indeed extend my condolences to his family, and, his, to the, and they have my sympathy in the people of North Eleuthera as well. Since then, also, we've lost Ms. Gail Clear of Harbor Island, and Ms. Stacy Thompson Hall of Gregory Town, Mr. Joseph Cash of Lower Bogue, a taxi driver. So our communities indeed have been affected by these persons that we've lost and their families. I extend my condolences and my sympathies to the family of Mr. Smith, to the Clear family, to the Thompson family in Gregory Town, and to the Cash family in Lower Bogue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member statements, Chair recognize Honorable Member for Nassau Village. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I just wanted to briefly mention to my constituents that in, that in doing what I would have said, Mr. Speaker, in my NAS presentation here, in trying to start an initiative to rebuild Nassau Village and to help to fight with crime as well as the creation of jobs, Mr. Speaker, we we're going to be in the constituency real soon. Mr. Speaker, in conjunction with the Ministry of the Minister of National Security, I don't have all our official dates and times as yet, but I will be announcing uh, the dates and times once they are given. But we intend to come through, Mr. Speaker, and try to see as much as we can do to help to rebuild Nassau Village, ensure the constituents that the government is still firmly committed to trying to assist in the problem in my constituency of crime and also trying to create jobs. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member Statements, Chair recognize Honorable Member for East. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, just two issues or two items. One, I want to uh, express condolences to a constituent of mine, uh, Mr. Wellen Thomas, uh, who was a local government councillor in uh, East Grand Bahama. Uh, Mr. Thomas has served that community for many, many years as a, as a councillor uh, and as a leading citizen. Uh, and uh, he certainly will be missed. Uh, his contributions uh, to the community are legendary, and uh, we certainly want to pass on to his family, his wife Julie and the children, our sincere condolences and thanks for a com for, from a community uh, which he con contributed so much towards. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, I just want to bring to the attention of this House the continuing issue with respect to 
the, the defaults on the Clico matter. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there are, there are citizens and residents of ours who are losing everything as a result of the, the continued um, uh, limbo that's caused by this whole uh, Clico matter. Um, and there's a lady in particular, I'll tell you just, just how desperate this is. There's a, there's a young lady who um, just called me this week who's about to lose her house. Her husband died. Uh, he had life insurance to cover the mortgage. And so far, she has not been able to collect the full value of the, of the life insurance policy. And as a result, she's about to lose the house. And she is saying, basically, listen, I'm going to burn down the house before I let them have it. And she's serious about that, Mr. Speaker. And that's where it's getting serious, Mr. Speaker. And I think that we owe it to our citizens to do our part as, as a government, to do our part. Uh, of course it's illegal. I mean, of, of course it is. I, I, I'm not suggesting that. But I'm just saying how desperate, how, how, how desperate people have, are, have gotten. And I think that we have to bear in mind and, and put some urgency uh, in trying to bring that matter to some resolution. And so I just bring it again uh, uh, to make sure that, that we don't forget that these are real people with real issues losing everything that they have as a result of something that is, that is not within their control not, or their fault. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member Statements. Chair recognize the Honorable Member for Marco City. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for recognizing me. I rise on behalf of the people of Marco City, of course, but just to make one plea. We've recently, um, over the last few months, heard of the resolve issue with the government taking a substantial amount of debt from Bank of the Bahamas and putting it in a company to allow Bank of the Bahamas not to be illiquid, not to, not to be on the wrong side of the balance sheet. That is in respect of very substantial borrowers. Nonetheless, in Freeport today, we have no less than, I know of one group, of 15 hardworking poor people who are before the courts now for failure to pay their mortgages to Bank of the Bahamas who are looking to lose their homes. This is a discussion I've had in this house over and repeatedly over the last three years. I'm just making the appeal again that we need to have a conscience, not just for the big people, but for the small people. We have people who have been dragged before the courts in Freeport on behalf of Bank of the Bahamas. And I'm not, I'm not trying to create an issue with Bank of the Bahamas. I'm talking about this government's involvement in Bank of the Bahamas and our ability to see when there's a need for some, for some relief and seeing that only in respect of the larger persons and not seeing that in respect of the smaller persons. I had a lady come to me the other day. Um, yesterday, in fact, um, showing me the legal papers. So I've actually seen these, Mr. Speaker. Through no fault of her own, she is underemployed, meaning she doesn't have the money she used to earn before. She has her children and her grandchildren. And she is coming to my headquarters because I've continued my, my practice of having an open pantry at my headquarters where persons can come for food. I've just had to continue that because the need is so dire. But she is in a car with her grandchildren and, and one of her children crying because she has to be in court on Monday to have a house taken away from her. And where does she go? This is a continuation, and I will keep, keep making the same plea. We cannot put our people on the streets. We cannot continue to see this destruction of the middle class that we're seeing through no fault of their own. And so the same mentality that went into into taking the burden off the big, off the bank in terms of the big loans? Please, where's that mentality in respect of the small loans? Where's that mentality in respect of the people who can least afford it? I rise on their behalf, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. The member for Golden Mr. Isles. You have the speaker, I would ask indulgence to reply. Certainly. I'm through you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. Thank you, Honorable Member. The removal of the large loans in terms of that were transferred from Bank of Bahamas to Resolve was in no way intended to absolve those big lenders from their responsibilities. As we speak today, Resolve is pursuing those lenders, so those borrowers, so that they can fulfill their obligations. I don't want it to be on the record that somehow large lenders 
are being absolved of their responsibility to repay. In fact, that borrowers, I'm sorry, being absolved of their responsibility to repay, resolved is actively pursuing those large borrowers so that they can fulfill their obligations. I hear the member and I share his concern about the small, as he puts it, the small individuals who are being impacted, but I don't want it to be perceived that somehow the large borrowers are being forgiven. They are being pursued so that they can fulfill their obligations as well. Thank you, Thank you Honourable Member. Member Statements? Chair recognize the Honourable Member for West Grand Bahama and Bimini. Mr. Speaker, I just wish to on behalf of the good people of West Head and Bimini to no, we're just saying about the time. say one or two words in recognition of the late <coughs> Lloyd Quant. Mr. Speaker, many would know Lloyd Quant perhaps as the father of one of our great basketball players, Sterling Quant. But I knew Lloyd Quant because he served as the warden of Queens College when I attended Queens College and lived in the hostel. He was laid to rest over the weekend, Mr. Speaker, at the age of 99. But here is a man who once led the Boys Industrial School and then later becoming the warden of Queens College Hostel. During the time he was there, he and his beautiful wife, they were able to cause for the growth and development of a number of young men, men who, and women who today are involved in the professional services of our country. Some are lawyers, some are doctors, some are business people. I'm a politician, Mr. Speaker. But during the time that he <coughs> served, he was a gentleman who caused all of us to understand what it is to live like family. There were rich, there were poor, there were whites, there were blacks. <coughs> we were all together, though, and we learned how to, when one didn't have, to share with the other. Mr. Speaker, he had a very special approach to life. He understood <coughs> that he was serving his God, and he did so right up until his death. In fact, last year, Mr. Speaker, November 16th, the exact date, we were in Sea Grape when we named a community center in his honor. And at that time, he said, I'm ready to go. I have received a number of awards, but I know when my time comes, I'm ready to go. And Mr. Speaker, he lived his life that way, always giving. In fact, sir, he had the ability to show love to all unconditional love like the Good Samaritan. He had the faith of Job, Mr. Speaker. He had the love of Jesus. He gave all that he possibly could while he lived, Mr. Speaker. And up until he died, he was a man who cared so much for the country that became his own. He was originally from the Turks and Caicos, but he came here, I think, in 1946. And ever since that time, Mr. Speaker, he's been giving service. service to mankind, service for a better country. And so on Saturday, there are members from both sides of the political divide attending the service, Mr. Speaker, and all who were there spoke highly of this man and gave him the honor that he so deserved, Mr. Speaker. And so today, on behalf of my constituents, <coughs> I wish to acknowledge his service to country, and I know, sir, that he's rested in peace. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member statements? Do you recognize the Honorable Member for Montague? Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise on behalf of the good people of Montague. Um, Mr. Speaker, I feel that the, um, the member for, um, for Carmichael would um, <coughs> address the concerns of the member for Marco City. I think if he'd let us know what amount had been collected by Resolve at this point so we could know, in fact, how um, how harshly they're being dealt with by, um, by this corporation or whether in fact they're being given a, a special um, comp dispensation. Anyway, um, we don't seem to be able to find much out about that, but what I really um, rose, uh, Mr. Speaker, for was to um, let the House know and, and um, the, the, um, the, the island that uh, this week is um, Kemp Road week and um, I would encourage members um, opposite to um, join in some of the festivities which um, are going to um, occur there, culminating on uh, Saturday of this week. And, um, you know, it's unfortunate one gets a bad name and it's, it's somewhat difficult to, to lose that name. Um, and, and Kemp Road, unfortunately, has had that stigma attached to it for, for many years. But um, I'd like to assure members that 
that uh, there has been um, a major change in the area and there are a lot of wonderful people that live there, a lot of law-abiding people. And so I would encourage um, members to join the, the um, festivities which are actually occurring in four places on um, opposite St. Margaret's uh, Church there in the Big Yard, down at Salem Baptist um, Basketball Court, um, White's Edition, and St. James Road. So I would encourage members to, to join there. It's starting now today to and uh, ends on Saturday. Yes. It's continuing, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member statements? Chair recognize Honorable Member for Angliston. I just wanted to um, speak to an, uh, an event that happened last Friday in Grand Bahama. And it was the, um, the occasion of a book presentation by a gentleman called Mark, Marco Steele. And he was a co-author along with two of his brothers. These Steele brothers, S-T-E-E-L-E -E -E brothers, are Bahamians. They're of Eleuthera and Inaguan um, or orient, or origin. And um, they've written a book called Generation Text. The Minister of Tourism um, also was at that event um, because there's another component to the book thing that I'll allude to shortly. But these young Bahamians, um, and this, this particular one, Marco, is the product of the public school system in our country. And he's gone on to write this book, which has caught the attention of a producer called Mark Lipsky of Coming to America fame. And what, else, what other movies he, he had? Um, Boomerang and several other movies. And um, this book deals with the, the, the problem of texting while driving, or in this case, as a vessel, while, uh, while behind the wheel, and um, speaks to a worldwide phenomenon. <coughs> They also got the endorsement of the United Nations, and the United Nations was represented there, and they said that it's only one of three occasions ever in the history of the United Nations where this kind of endorsement has happened. But I want our people to listen out and look out for this generation text, the book, and the movie, which is being made in Freeport in Grand Bahama, and um, yes, and that, that part of the public school system, and that um, um, this, is a, this is an example of young Bahamians who started out not, the, not, not with any silver spoon in their mouths, but who were able through their own ingenuity and talent and courage to break out beyond the boundaries and to move forth and to really put the Bahamas out on the world map. So I I'm inviting Mr. Speaker Yu to look out for this movie, Generation Text, under the hand of the produ producer Mark Lipsky, who has done several blockbusters and who's now assisting or, or, or working the work of um, Bahamian writers from um, New Providence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Thank you, Honorable Member. Member statements? Chair recognize Honorable Member for Yamakura. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would just like to take this opportunity to offer condolences to um, three families, um, two of whom lived in the, in the General Yamakura constituency to the family of the late Lenora Lane Stubbs, who uh, was funeralized on Saturday. I would wish to offer condolences to her daughter, Dorothy Newbold, and the rest of the family on her passing, and um, also the family of Lovato Major. I'd like to offer condolences to his wife, Teresa Major and family and his father, Louis McDonald Major and family. Um, I attended both of those funerals on Saturday and um, I wish to offer condolences um, to those families. Also to the family of Mr. Vincent Colby. And Mr. Colby, Mr. Speaker, um, I wish to offer condolences to his wife, Deborah, and family and to his siblings. Um, <coughs> And Mr. Kobe was the son of the late uh, Senator um, Edwin Kobe and Mrs. Perlene Kobe. And of course, he, was all, he worked at, uh, I think, both Texaco and Shell. And he also worked as a musician in his church. And he had, the, he had a wonderful home going um, as well on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to say uh, well done and congratulations to Father Badu and 
Mr. Carl Spencer and all the officers and members of the Epiphany Anglican Church uh, for a very successful, a very successful annual fair they ha um, hosted on Saturday as well on the church grounds, and um, I think it was quite successful there in the building fund mode. So I just want to congratulate them for a, a, a very successful event that was well attended by all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member statements. Chair, recognize Honorable Member for Bain and Grand Star. Microphone. Microphone. Uh, no, I wish to join you in expressing sincerest condolences on the death of Reverend Dr. Hervis Bain, who was a lifelong friend of mine. We both attended Southern Junior School, Southern Senior School. He went off to Government High. Sorry, he went off to St. John's, and I went to Government High. A little older than I was, Mr. Speaker, but uh, we used to go to Boys Brigade together. We joined the Boys Brigade band together, and we used to beat drums. I used to beat the trap drum, I think they call it. We used to beat them funny drums that you use the two sticks with, not not the bass drum. But we 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 um we were brought up under Captain Simpson Penn, and in, in the first national company of the Boys Brigade, and Mr. Speaker. It, it was a company that produced many men that made tremendous contributions to our country. As you indicated, Mr. Bain was a very celebrated Bahamian and a senior minister at St. John's Baptist Cathedral. And um, they are paying him a tremendous tribute because he's being buried, not in the churchyard, but in a mausoleum that they are currently constructing at the front of the church, which I think is a signal honor to someone who's contributed so much to the development of our country. I also wish, and so I wish to express my sincerest condolences to his wife, his, his family, and of course to the members of the church. I'd also like to express condolences to the family of Mrs. Advilda Grant from Labor Street, Mr. Speaker, um, who was a <coughs> very strong and avid supporter of our party uh, who struggled with it for many years. She was originally from Eight Mile Rock, I think. Grand Bahama came to, 83 years old, came to the Bahamas when she was a very young girl and lived a very, very involved life. She was a member of the Roman Catholic Church, our ladies, and, and, and uh, uh, a very hard worker, uh, not only for the church, but for her neighborhood. And finally, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to express condolences to Mrs. <coughs> Shirley Woodside, our family, of Augusta Street. Uh, Shirley uh, would have been about 78 years old, I think, <laughs> Mrs. Speaker. She was one who worked for many years at National Insurance Board, uh, a retiree, a retired person, who then um, assisted me when I went into Baintown as the candidate for the Progressive Global Party who worked for us in the office for several years and who was a real community person upon whom uh, all of our neighbors could depend. Uh, they're dying, Mr. Speaker, and um, people who were good Bahamians, who were dependent Bahamians, who uh, were examples, models of excellence, uh, all. And I hope that they will all rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. The, t the time for member statements has elapsed. However, the chair received a written request from the member for uh, Michael. The, the chair will allow it, and the chair will then allow the member for Golden Gates. Immediately afterwards, the chair would urge you both to be brief. Thank you. I recognize the member for Michael. Be very brief. It did escape me, Mr. Speaker, because of the weight which. I carry for the people of my constituency for the hurricane. I spoke mainly to that, but it cannot be overlooked, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> I thank you for the opportunity to extend sympathy <coughs> to the family of the late Reverend Dr. Hervis Bain. And when you spoke to it, he hails from Hard Hill, Acklands, yeah. the very settlement from which I came in, in Acklands. Uh, Dr. Bain's <coughs> history has legend to it. And there's no need for me to repeat what uh, the member for Bainstown has already said. 
I think it's important for Bahamians everywhere to know he has already uh, etched a place in the history of our country for himself. And so on behalf of my family, I'd like to extend sympathies to his wife, Beverly, uh, the family of the St. John's Native Baptist Society, <coughs> and indeed the Baptists uh, uh, everywhere. And then finally, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Granville Emanuel. Uh, he died uh, last week. He is from Salina Point in Acklands. Mr. Speaker, he was one of the persons who championed the cause of the poor in Acklands as a mate of the mail boat. He was the mate of the mail boat for many years. And Mr. Speaker, my mother always spoke about him as one of the most honest men that, he had, that she had met in her lifetime. If you gave him $5 to buy something, and it was $4.75, he will bring that, 75, that 25 cents back in an envelope to you. Uh, she always described his honesty. And, and because people were not able to travel to Nassau, they always send for things to buy with him. And I think Auckland's people have lost uh, two of their finest <laughs> sons in Granville Emanuel of Selena Point and Reverend Dr. Hervis Bain. May the <laughs> soul and the soul of the faithful rest in peace. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member for Golden Gates. Mr. Speaker, <coughs> um, when I was uh, first um, campaigning for Golden Gates, I had promised the um, constituents of Golden Gates to introduce a number of programs that would um, be self-sustaining to assist um, persons um, in the Golden Gates constituency. And as I said before, um, in this place, I would started something called All White Party, where we um, have a Golden Gates Scholarship Foundation established, and we raise funds to give deserving young people in the Golden Gates constituency or assist them with their uh, schooling. Um, this year, Mr. Speaker, as I said before, we were able to give out some $20,000 in scholarship. And just this past weekend, on Friday, on Friday the 30th of October, we hosted our third annual um, All White Party, which was a huge success again. And so I just want to thank all of those persons who participated, who supported. We had about three or 400 persons there, Mr. Speaker. And because of the um, monies that we were able to raise at the function on a Friday past, we will be able to give out at least $30,000 next year in scholarships in Golden Gates. And so I want to thank the persons who continue to support it, uh, Corporate Bahamas, <laughs> along with the individuals. And um, as we are um, trying to assist in um, Golden Gates, I'm also um, doing all I could to keep uh, my father's memory alive. And so we uh, have named um, two of the scholarships, uh, one in honor of him, King Eric um, Scholarship, and one in honor of my mother, Gerling Gibson. And so we'll continue to uh, have these events to raise funds uh, to assist um, persons in Golden Gates. And I just want to put people on alert in Golden Gates and throughout the Bahamas that we'll be having the second annual King Eric Gibson All for One Regatta, which will be held on January um, 10th weekend, majority rule weekend, on that Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. The 10th is actually a Sunday, but it'll be celebrated on the Monday. So we'll have a regatta in Monaco Bay on the 10th, the 9th, 10th, and 11th of January. La this year, Mr. Speaker, was a huge success. We literally had ten, tens of thousands of individuals out there. And so this is going to be another event where we are raising funds again. Um, we were able to assist um, several of the family island regattas out of the funds, the funds that we raised in the name of King Eric. And um, next year again, we will be raising more money to assist more of the family island regattas uh, throughout the land and breadth of the Bahamas. So I thank all of those persons who continue to support these events in Golden Gates and also people throughout the Bahamas. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. Appointment of Select Committee. Instructions to select committees, discharge of select committees, notices for future meetings. Chair recognize the Honorable Member for Central Grand Bahama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, at the next meeting, I propose to ask the Right Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Finance the following questions. Why were all government ministries instructed to make travel arrangements exclusively with Going Places Travel Agency? Who are the beneficial owners of Going Places Travel Agency? Why was Bahamas Air Sales Office not utilized for government travel exclusively as the national fly carrier of the Bahamas? Why was Bahamas Air's group and travel desk staffed by some four individuals 
not utilized for government ministries travel. What will now happen to the staff members employed at the Bahamas' government travel desk? Will the minister lay a copy of the agreement between the government of the Bahamas and Going Places Travel Agency on the table of the House of Assembly? Thank you, Honorable Member. Order that the notice be brought up. Mr. Speaker, I wish to renew all matters in the name of the opposition on the agenda. Thank you, Honorable Member. Order that the questions do lie on the table. Further notices for future meetings, I recognize the Honorable Member for Bain and Grandstone. I think I move that all matters on the agenda in the name of members of the government be renewed. I also wish to inform the House that we will be sitting next on Wednesday the 11th when it is the intention of the government to table bills um, associated with the transformation of the VAMP of BEC. And it's sorry. The table bills are in relation to Bahamas Electricity Corporation and the new uh, regime that is being introduced. Um, I would wish you to also bear in mind that it is intended to debate whatever legislation is related to that on the 16th. So the the, the bills will be tabled here on the 11th. If we have them ready before then, I will send copies to the leader of government business. But I'm just giving notice so that you would prepare to have the debate on Monday, the 16th of November. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Thank you, Honorable Member. Adjournment. <coughs> Speaker, I move that the House adjourns until Wednesday, the 11th of November. Second. Moved and seconded that the business of this House adjourns until Wednesday, the 11th of November, in the year of our law 2015. As many as are in favor will remain seated. Those opposed will stand. Final adjournment. Speaker, I move the House to now adjourn. It is moved and seconded that the House do now adjourn. As many as are in favor will stand.